Here's something that I didn't think I would need to ever talk about, ever. Let's talk today about Tomasz Hurdle and Kevin LeBanc, and whether or not these guys are prime trade candidates for the San Jose Sharks. Now, the reason we're talking about this is because on a recent Sharks mailbag by Kevin Kurse, he was bringing these ideas up. This is from like nine days ago, so bear with me here. But because this is an article from The Athletic, I'm not going to read it because it's paid for content, it's not something that I think should be shared on a free platform. Instead, what we're going to do is go over to SpectresHockey.net. Lyle Richardson over here on Spectres posted an article on May 23rd going over Kevin Curse's article and talking about LeBanc and Hurdle too. So let's go over to Spectres Hockey and read what it says about these two sharks. In a recent mailbag segment, Kevin Curse was asked about the possibility of the San Jose Sharks trading Tomas Hurdle. The 26-year-old forward carries a 5.625 million annual average value through 2021-22, and his modified no-trade clause doesn't kick in until next season. While one can never say never, Curse doesn't see the Sharks moving Hurdle. Curse was also asked about how much Kevin LeBanc could receive on his next contract. The 26-year-old winger is a restricted free agent completing a one-year deal. Now, that's actually incorrect, first and foremost. Kevin LeBanc is 24, he's turning 25 at the end of 2020, but continuing on. He's a restricted free agent completing a one-year, $1 million contract, and he has arbitration rights. But the decline in his production this season could hurt his efforts to land a lucrative new deal. Curse wouldn't offer more than three to four million dollars annually, but he wonders if the LeBanc camp would actually accept that. He considers LeBanc a prime trade candidate. Now, this is actually an interesting, interesting idea over here. Even on the Spectres note here on Spectres Hockey, it says that the Sharks general manager Doug Wilson could surprise us by moving to Mash Hurdle before his modified no trade clause goes into effect, but that route is indeed doubtful. Now, when it comes to a trade idea involving these two players, first off, talking about Tomas Hurdle, he's in a position where the only reason the Sharks would actually consider moving him is because either A, they can find a better player cheaper, or B, they just completely given up on him entirely. Tomas Hurdle wasn't playing ending off the 2019-2020 season, he was on the LTIR, but the way the San Jose Sharks are actually assembled, they have an estimated $17 million of cap space next season, and the only really interesting names that they need to resign include guys like Melchor Carlson, Joe Thornton, Kevin LeBanc, of course, and then a few other guys, Aaron Dell, I guess you could say in that discussion as well. There isn't really too much of an incentive to go out there and free up money for the sake of freeing up money, because there is kind of a lot of money already there. It's just, Tomas Hurdle is a guy who's been getting injured over and over again, it was really unfortunate to see what happened to him this past season, and if the San Jose Sharks actually want to be in a position to start winning games again, trading away a Tomas Hurdle might be a nice move to get somebody who can actually help their team out. But hey, the guy's got a three-team no-trade kicking in next season, and that's really going to hinder things once that comes into effect, so the possibility that Doug Wilson does indeed trade him before his NTC comes in is existing, we just don't really think it's that plausible. As for Kevin LeBanc, this is a really, really interesting one. I was a huge fan of Kevin LeBanc back when he was playing for the Barry Colts in 2014. After he got drafted in the sixth round of the 2014 NHL entry draft, I was like, yo, okay, this could be a potential great pick for the San Jose Sharks. And lo and behold, give it two years and all of a sudden Kevin LeBanc is one of the top scorers in the entire CHL. His 127 points in 65 games in 2016 was the marker where I was like, yeah, you know, I think I was kind of right. This guy's going to be great. And give it a few years with the San Jose Barracuda, with the San Jose Sharks, and all of a sudden, last season, Kevin LeBanc had 56 points in 82 games, 17 goals, 39 assists, as a guy who had recently turned 23. And he was an RFA looking for a new contract. And everybody was saying, okay, if this guy gets offer sheeted, he could get upwards of maybe even like five 
Six million dollars? He's young, he's getting points, he's really good. What's going on with this guy? Let's see what's going to happen. And then he signed a really team-friendly one-year, one million dollar contract. And that was something that a lot of people were like, yeah, okay, this guy is the ultimate team player. This guy doesn't care about the money. This guy is going to come over here, do what's best for the team, and allow the team to use their money to sign either free agents or keep some of the other guys who were destined for free agency down the line. What a team player Kevin LeBanc is. But then his production dropped off 33 points in 70 games, which is not bad, especially for a recently turned 24 year old, but he's in a position where he honestly could have gotten so much more money if he signed last season than signing again this year. Which is why, with the way his season last year went, some people are saying, you know, if the San Jose Sharks don't want to pay him because they're demanding money that the 2019 Kevin LeBanc was able to get, then let's see if there's a trade idea that exists for him later on. Now, in my opinion, this is honestly one of the most interesting discussions here, because the only reason the Sharks would want to trade a Kevin LeBanc is because he's asking for a little bit more than they're actually willing to accept. With that in mind, one may ask, okay, well, what is the price tag of a Kevin LeBanc, and would teams be willing to add this kind of player? In my opinion, I think that there definitely would be interest for this player. Sure, he had a down year, getting 33 points in 70 games, but he's just a year removed from getting 56 points and almost 20 goals. He's a guy who was young, and he still has so much room to grow, develop, and prosper in this league. As a young playmaker looking to find his way throughout the NHL, there certainly is some value here in seeing Kevin LeBanc and potentially cracking a top six once he is in his prime. Maybe this past season with a San Jose Sharks team that was one of the worst in the league was just an anomaly. Maybe Kevin LeBanc comes back to form and he gets upwards of 60 points next year, 65. It all depends on the team around him, how good they're going to be, and if Kevin LeBanc is actually going to have the opportunity to get those points. And playing on a team that is better than the San Jose Sharks last year may just be the opportunity that he needs to get that accomplished. It's why the idea of Kevin LeBanc's next contract is so interesting. Does a team come over here and acquire Kevin LeBanc's rights and sign him to that lucrative four, five, six million dollar deal that he probably could have gotten last season because they believe he is capable of being the Kevin LeBanc from last year again? Or does he get a short one-year, let's say, $2 million prove-it deal once again? That's certainly the idea that most teams would honestly be comfortable with, in my opinion, because you can never tell with players like these. Obviously, you're going to have the believers, some people who believe that LeBanc can be good again, but at the same time, you can't say that with 110% certainty, because the guy very legitimately just declined. So... Whether the San Jose Sharks offer him a big deal, or if they're able to snag him up on a very middle-of-the-pack deal, like three, three and a half million dollars, there's an opportunity here for Kevin LeBanc to prove himself as a very good steal of a contract. Imagine if he does come back to form, and he's only on a three and a half million dollar deal. All of a sudden, you have a guy who looks like he could potentially crack 70 points one year, getting just about three-ish million dollars. That sounds like an absolute bargain. But if the Sharks aren't willing to go with his contract demands early on, there is an idea of a trade that exists. So, that's the video here today on Tomas Hurdle and Kevin LeBanc, two San Jose Sharks forwards who have seen better days in the past, but who are on the subject of trade talks today because the situations with the Sharks and the situations with these individual players are just that unique. Comment down below what you think about Tomas Hurdle and Kevin LeBanc. If you're not a Sharks fan, would you want your team to trade for these players? And if so, what's the max that you would be willing to give up? 
Honestly, for me, it's kind of tough to say with Tomas Hurdle because he has been so good in the past. He was an all-star for crying out loud. It's just the guy has been hurt and the guy is already in a position where the contract of five point something million dollars could come back to bite whichever team has that contract if they're not careful. As a Canucks fan, I honestly don't think that would be the best move because the Canucks have their own cap problems already. They don't want to add to that anymore. As for LeBanc, I'm still a believer in this guy. Although it's not guaranteed, I certainly do think that he can become a great NHL player once more. So it's up to the team that trades for him or signs him to his contract that's going to have to determine whether or not they believe that too. So comment down below your thoughts on this topic. I hope you enjoyed this video. Search that Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>